Now, moving on to the discussion or the implications of, of your research. I find that uh, PhD students, when they're sending drafts of their discussion to me, very often they can't think of anything to discuss. So they, so they start by repeating, summarizing what was in some of the results section, hoping that inspiration will eventually come to them. Um, and I've also seen this in some manuscripts from scientists. So please do not start off your discussion session by repeating, just summarizing what was already in the results. The results are the results, and they're there. And now you take information from the results, and you discuss them here. So discuss the results in the order in which they were presented. And I'll give you an example from one of my manuscripts. This is where you interpret your findings. You interpret how your results fit in with your stated objectives and hypotheses. Then you move on to compare how your results look in comparison with other people's pub published work. So you start by going back to your introduction. Then you go out to compare with the rest of the world to say what they are doing and what they have concluded. Then uh, in some cases, for some types of uh, science, you need to identify potential limitations in your research. This is, this is mainly in the so, so, sociology, uh, social sciences. Um, but they actually encourage you to identify the limitations of your research. And then future research, what I like to do is to say what I'm actually doing now. Say, these are the results and how we interpreted them from the research that I'm presenting. We are already taking part of that to the next step. So I would say, I would give one or two sentences about what we're doing at the moment. And then I would also say what the implications are, the broader implications are for this area of science if it's plant breeding, then what the benefit could be for plant breeders and so on. And I like to have a take-home message at the end, which could be, for many journals, they like you to include a conclusion, which could be just a series of bullet points with one sentence underneath each one to identify the key points that the reader should be taking home from reading your manuscript. Okay, now this is an example. I was talking earlier about repeating results in the discussion. This was actually an example from uh, somebody from Poland who was writing up uh, results of some of their research. And she sent me this. Uh, I'm not expecting you to read it, so don't, don't struggle to read it. She, she sent me, th this was uh, early on in her discussion and all of the text in grey is just summarizing the results. And the only interpretation of her results is that final sentence in red at the bottom. Probably in these conditions, the effect of non stomachal mechanism regulation of... Well, the English is not very good. I, I, I rewrote it anyway, but... Uh, that's the only interpretation in the whole of that paragraph. So, do not spend time just repeating information that is already in the results. Right. This is an example of how I presented the discussion in one of my recent papers. And what I've shown you first is the order of presenting information in the results section. So there were two main parts of the manuscript uh, of the research in environments and phenotypes. Does that make any sense to you? Phenotypes? No? It's what something looks like. Uh, my phenotype is different from Tara's. Yeah, okay. 
uh, genetic mapping of QTL, forget blah, 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 blah. That's, that's sort of blah, blah, blah. Don't worry. Uh, you don't need to understand the words. And then uh, I've described different subsections in different colors. So just look at the fact that I've got in the results red and then blue and then green. That's the order in which I presented information in the results. And then when I got to the discussion, my discussion was in the same order as I presented information in the results. Then at the end you see I've got future developments and finally I have a section called conclusions which was just the bullet, bullet points to identify the main features. Acknowledgements. Acknowledgements for people who have contributed to the work in some way. They may be a technician who was doing analyses for you. They may be um, somebody in a different institute who sent you the samples that you grew. Or it could be somebody who helped you with putting together the manuscript. So you may have had a discussion with somebody to discuss the quality of the English, for example to make sure that what you were submitting was going to be good quality English. So these are the people that you ought to be putting down in your list of acknowledgements. And also I've put in bold there, which I see people are doing here in Serbia. So it's not a problem for anybody that I have come across. Acknowledging the funding sources that paid for the research. Most of you, I'm assuming, are on ministry projects. Are you? Is there anybody who's getting funding from a, from a different source, not from the ministry? You are? Okay, from Norway. Oh, the Czech Republic. Very good. Very good. You see, so again, the funding for that ought to be acknowledged. So... Uh, right, then what comes next? References. Now I've got at the bottom here, um, some people use EndNote or Reference Manager. There are, uh, there are softwares available now for you to organize your references and make them consistent. I'm afraid I still do it the old-fashioned way by copying it and then pasting it and then reformatting it. So, so uh, but this is where I find very often there are uh, problems in the, in the formatting. Make, make sure that your formatting is consistent. Make sure that all of your references in the reference list are cited and vice versa. Those that are in the text have got to be also given in, in the reference list. I, I occasionally find references which have obviously been copied from the original PDF file or the website because they have got the title of the paper in title case, which means that the first letter of all the major words is an uppercase character. So make sure that if you are copying your title from the publication itself, copy, paste, you then have to reformat it to make sure that it's lowercase. Right, you've got to the end of your manuscript. <laughs>